Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular. Raising the bar. Welcome everyone to our studios here in New York for Singular at the Half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark and Seth. Let's get you out to more action. This one in Jacksonville where Florida leads Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Let's join Tim, Mike, and Steven. Florida led by eight at the break. They're up 14 now with time ticking. Joa Tucker, who's really struggled today, had early foul difficulty. This time a foul. It's spotted against Lee Humphrey. With 10.36 remaining, Joa will get to the free throw line. One of five starting seniors for this club. Trailing by 14. Take a look at our game summary. Florida has upped their lead to 14. And uh, fellas, I look at what's going on with Wisconsin Milwaukee. Somehow, some way, the stars of this team, Tucker and Davis, have got to get more involved. I mean, Adrian Tigers having to do it all on his own. He's got 21 points. The rest of the team has 21 points, Stephen. It's never too late to be a great player. They need their guys to step up. And he's having a day reminiscent of what Jerry McNamara had the other day, really not being able to score and you look at the numbers right there just really struggling with this shot shot selection and he's getting abused on the other end with the mismatch. Lou Davis and uh, Joe Tucker combined for 50 points on Thursday only 10 so far today. But, but look at the coverage you've got 6 8 Brewer on Lou Davis and 6 11 Noah on Joe Tucker. I'm sure they've never seen defenders like that before their length is really bothering it's tough cover. Chris Richard whistled for the foul that's his fourth becomes the first Gator with four fouls Al Horford who has three will check in for him They're having some difficulty dealing with uh, Adrian Tiger and his motor Tiger obviously affected on the defensive end with his three fouls but playing very strong on the offensive side Davis again slashes into the paint only to have it come right back in his face courtesy Joe Kim Noah green to Horford that's how you get back in the game if you're Tariq, Tariq Green. To push the ball to the floor and create opportunities, have your teammates get off, and then they'll slack off of you and give you opportunity. Well, that's an air ball, but it's uh, retrieved by Davis, and the foul will go against Lee Humphrey. Here's a, a way to start a break. Yeah, just a great defensive help. And Noah has been ranging all game long in the paint, and then the great look. And it's like, you know, talk about bigs. All of them can run the floor. And, and on one end, Noah triggers it, and Horford cleans it up on the other end. It's interesting. We talked to the coaches yesterday about those two um, roommates together. Uh, Horford stoic, Noah very excitable, and, and they're and actually they balance each out uh, each other out very very well. And yeah, they call their uh, call their home the jungle. There are four of them together, once on the side with Noah, and uh, Horford is known as the uh, the jungle. Horford is very quick to point out that there's not as much Dominican Republic uh, paraphernalia on the walls as there would be African paraphernalia <laughs> hanging from the walls, and it all belongs to Joe Kim. When Noah gets too hyper, Horford calms him down, yeah, and when Horford's too removed and stoic, uh, Noah gets him amped up. So it's a, a good mix, good combination. And then you got the pretty boys in the next door, <laughs> Victoria Green and Corey Brewer. Like to be a little bit. A little bit more immaculate with their their pad, <laughs> like they call the palace. Yes. Brewer lost his dribble that time running the curl. Got into the hands of Alan Hansen. Boo Davis quickly gets it to Tucker. Nice interior pass. Tiger gets it outside to Hansen, who rattles it home. He's made a contribution in this game. Nice inside out work by Tiger. Again, Horford. Nothing Adrian Tiger can do playing with three fouls. Well, the floor spacing of Florida allows them to get those one-on-one -on -one matchups in the paint. And there's just not enough time to come and help off of those weak side shooters. Hanson again. That ball was deflected by Brewer. He got a hand on that one. And the foul spotted as Torian Green is tagged by Chris Hill. And how about the ability of Corey Brewer fell down on one end of the one side of the floor. It was swung around and he's long enough and quick enough to get over and block that three point attempt. And Corey Brewer holding that head fellas. 
he uh, leaves the game. I think he may have gotten dizzy again. He got a couple marbles loose up there. Probably took a got hit trying to fight through one of the picks along the baseline. Anybody that rubs too close to Joe Tucker is going to feel some pain. Jason McCoy back into the game for Wisconsin Milwaukee. They're hoping he can play a little better defensively in that interior. Tigert offering little because of his foul difficulty. 17 points in 17 minutes of action for Corey Brewer this afternoon. He is grimacing. Well, and that, you know what? It's how many times or how many, you know, you know, it's often you see that a great defender also can give you scoring on the other end. A lot of times you leave it all on that end of the floor. Tucker, he's done a number on today, one of 10 shooting for, shooting for Joe. So it's just getting it done at both ends. Well, we talked about this, but this is the dilemma for teams like Wisconsin, Milwaukee. They dominate their conference, but when they come up against, as you said, Mike, one of these BCF conference powerhouses, they see athletes that they are not accustomed to seeing. Corey Brewer at 6'8", as slight of frame, but so quick and long, really provides problems that they're not used to seeing. Yeah, that's, that's why I thought that, that Oklahoma was the perfect matchup for them, especially with their bigs who are more plotting uh, and then play a slower tempo. Joe Tucker picking up the foul, his third. Joe Kim Noah back to the free throw line. As we look at Tucker, his old school that he transferred from Bradley did a number on Kansas, one of the wow. hottest teams in the nation coming into the NCAA tournament. Bill Self uh, won and out in consecutive years. And Kansas, one of those young teams that really dialed in in the month of February, similar to North Carolina, really one of the hotter teams coming into this NCAA tournament. You touched on it, Tim, I, and I think for the most part, it Duke's a little bit of an anomaly this year. But if you may not ever hear the word old with the major conference schools. Yeah, yeah they, they may have to win it with younger guys. Absolutely. The adjustments that guys like Billy Donovan have to make in the in the sport are completely polar opposites of what Rob Peter deals with in Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And, and, and by the way, both seem to be comfortable with it. That they have to do it that way at that particular institution or or conference that they may be in. Well, they're tapping into the nation's best, and typically the nation's best are looking to go to the next level. Horford gets the roll. Al Horford makes it a 64-47 game. Humphrey gets called with a hand check against Boo Davis, and uh, Rob Jeter applauds. Anything to stop the clock and extend this game. Take a look at how the uh, conferences have done in this tournament. The ACC 5-0 and oh at this point. The Southeastern Conference losing only Arkansas to Bucknell, who's uh, next up for Memphis, which ought to be an outstanding matchup. The Pac-10 is 3-1 and one early on. And, you know, the Big East lost a couple. I think fans have to realize, though, now, the Big East is really not a conference, it's a section. <laughs> I mean, that's a sectional qualifier that they have in New York the week before the NCAAs get underway. 16 teams, and they don't all play one another. And it's very interesting that you, you saw on that page there that two teams that had tough conference, supposedly. So the Florida Gators showing themselves to be just a little too talented, a little too strong for Wisconsin-Milwaukee. 7.53 to play in the second half. Florida leads it by a score, 64 to 57. Earlier today in Greensboro, Duke looked 13. It was a very comfortable game for the Blue Devils. All right. Meanwhile, we thank you for joining us here on Singular at the Half. We'll send you back for the second half of Tennessee-Wichita State after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, raising the bar. Yeah, you could be my bodyguard. They've got plenty of them with Florida today. They're leading by 17. Let's take a look at our power aids, power in the paint. And Adrian Tiger has been truly outstanding all day long. And you, I talked to him yesterday. We were in the meeting with him, Timmy. And, uh, you know, I said, uh, as a senior, the uh, the real world is looming in your front windshield. And he said, yeah, it hit home the other day. My roommate got a call about a job interview. And that really <laughs> kind of shook him up four or five years ago. That seemed a long way away, Stephen. But your senior year, it changes everything in, in, in your whole perspective. And especially in a situation like this, when you're 14 down, going down the stretch or 17, excuse me, 17 down, down going down the stretch and it's starting to creep in 
your whole college experience flashes right in front of your eyes, and it's a very painful situation. This is a young man that uh, was lost for two and a half weeks after being undercut in a game against Cleveland State. Wisconsin-Milwaukee had to fight through that period. You can see in the two games we've had here how vital it is for him to be on the floor. There's Noah. He's going to be fouled by Tiger again, who did undercut and actually root him out, and uh, that's why he was tagged for the foul his fourth. I'd say that it, the NCAA commercial is that for a lot of these kids, this is the last time they're going to be wearing a uniform, and they're going to turn pro, but uh, not on the court. And uh, for them, these will be the lasting memories of basketball that they'll carry getting into the NCAA tournament. In talking with him yesterday, I was reminded of Mike Wilkinson, the big dairy farmer that played for Wisconsin a couple of years ago when we chatted with him at the NCAA tournament, Mike, and uh, Yes, sir. No, sir. That kind of uh, young man. And uh, you get a nice blend, really, with Wisconsin, Milwaukee, of inner city kids and uh, the rural farmland players, you know? Steven, see you think about this. I mean, we, you know, we talked about Gonzaga and shedding that mid-major. I think this program and Joe Kim Noah getting a nice hand, I think Wisconsin, Milwaukee may be close to doing that as well. And you look at who they've beaten in the NCAA tournament in the last two years. And they've become a mainstay in, in the March dance. And you know, dominate their conference every year and have players like Joe Tucker, like Adrian Tiger, and Chris Hill there that just fight and scrap and fight for that re respect that they expect from a team that has to fight mid-majors along with the big boys like Florida. Florida and Green is hit with that foul. And consider this. I mean, look at this graphic right here. You see the, the over the last four years. Before that stretch, before 02, they had never been on national TV. Mm -hmm. And in, since that time, 16 times, 17, including today. So that's quite a step for this program. I'm curious, from both of your perspectives, knowing Rob Jeter as you do, knowing the style of play he wanted to implement, which was in sharp contrast to Bruce Pearl. These seniors did adapt to it. But would Milwaukee have fared better had they played to their strength and gone with full court pressure, opened it up, as opposed to try to take the air out of the ball a bit? I don't think so, because we saw Milwaukee try to pressure early, and Florida was getting layups on the other end or getting them in foul trouble. And so I'm not sure it would have had that much of an effect. I just think the Joe Kim Noah effect yeah. is, is what's really bothering Milwaukee this, this afternoon. But Timmy, I think what makes what makes Florida difficult to press is their big. Oh, absolutely. And how well they yeah. handle the ball. Yeah. I, my thoughts are there are some in uh, Milwaukee and surrounding area that would be curious to get your thoughts on that. Brewer running the curl, unable to hit off that finger roll. Another offensive rebound by Horford. I am so impressed with Corey Brewer and his ability to rub shoulders and get in creases to find opportunity. Knocked away, last touch by Milwaukee. Monday on CBS, don't miss an all-new night of comedy, The King of Queens, How I Met Your Mother, Two and a Half Men, and The New Adventures of Old Christine, followed by a new CSI Miami, plus David Letterman, Monday on CBS, America's number one network. Brewer hits the deck again. He's going to have a double, du a very groggy double double, perhaps, before it's over. Humphrey, count it, and a foul. Well, the double double is going to be scoring in vision. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just the ability to beat off the dribble. And uh, Humphrey, you know, the, when you get a three point shooter, it can do that. It makes it very difficult. Craig Gumbel in New York, you heard the guys. Florida's just a little bit too tough today. Meanwhile, in Greensboro, Wichita State and Tennessee, five points apart. Kevin Harlan and Dan Bonner. C.J. Watson with the fall away has brought the Tennessee Volunteers to within three in full court pressure by Tennessee. And C.J. Watson, that's only his second basket of the game. And when he's matched up against Breyer in the backcourt, I think he has an advantage. That time you saw him use that advantage to good effect. Watson is only... Got a couple, as you say, he's averaging 15 a game. Now here's another steal, their fifth steal of the game. Let's see if they can convert it into a basket. Lofton double team and fell as he threw up the three. He's hard with the rebound out there with Briar Wilson Martin. And they got O'Geary. O'Geary over the last eight games has shot over 50% from three-point territory for the Shockers. He only took one three-point shot in the first half and he missed that. Tennessee doing a nice job. There is another steal. 
This is Bradshaw to Watson. Across the lane and on top to Patterson. Nice job by Wichita State to get back on the defensive end. Tennessee, it's a little tougher for them when they have to play against the set half-court defense. Tennessee is the two seed. They beat Winthrop by two here Thursday on a last-second shot by Lofton. Look at the crabbing move he by Wingate inside. He did walk inside as he went across the lane. This is the Washington, D.C. bracket. Winner of this game will advance to meet the winner of George Mason, North Carolina. That game will occur tomorrow. That's only the fourth turnover by Tennessee this afternoon. And you saw that time Miller came up to try to help out against the pressure. Tennessee has really given Wichita State problems getting the ball inbounds. Nine turnovers for the Shockers so far. Wilson against Lofton. Boy, Wilson continues to have a big game. He scored 10 in the first half. He's now got 12 points. That's more than his average. Again, Miller trying to keep Wingate out of the lane. And he bulldozes Miller, and Wingate finds two. He had 15 points to Wingate on Thursday. A very good game. Boy, that's, he just, you're right, Kevin, just bowled his way to the basket that time. Kusnard for three. That's his third in the game. He hit the one to end the first half, and Wichita State continues to be very efficient on offense. They've got their biggest lead. He is 4 of 5. Lofton backing up to think about a 3. Watson. Wingate. Oh, and this is the wide-open jam, but Patterson is there to retrieve it with the Watson 3 to follow. Uh, if that's not in the playbook, Bruce Pearl ought to consider putting it in the playbook. You miss the dunk, and that disorganizes the defense, and you can get an open three. That's the first three by anybody from the volunteers other than Lofton. Go inside again. You know, inside defense has been troublesome for Tennessee all season. There's a foul as... Watson was taking it the other way. This is a very interesting play. Look at all the black shirts around the basket. Everybody stops playing because they think that one's going in the goal. And then the rebound. Now the black shirts from Wichita State trying to get organized defensively, and they do not find Watson in time. Bradshaw is out, and Jawan Smith is in. The foul went on Breyer for the second time for the Shockers. Jawan Smith, C.J. Watson for three. Defensive rebound is reeled in by Patterson, who then moves on Wilson and finds Watson, who finds the rim. What a nice slashing move. Watson really does a nice job getting the ball to the basket. We only saw him do that once in the first half, but here in the second half, he's been much more aggressive offensively, and that has really helped Tennessee. Watch the five-second call here. Great defense. Again, another turnover. Lofton, three on one. Watson converts, and Tennessee, down by six a moment ago, is crept to within a point. And that's the way Tennessee wants to play. Get the turnover and get the run out on the turnover. Nice pass, and it goes from Kusnard into Miller. Kusnard, oh, 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 oh. and then a rejection inside by Andre Patterson. He picks up the volunteer foul. That is his third. Some kind of move as Tennessee continues to chisel away at that Wichita State lead. Earlier here at the Coliseum in Greensboro, Duke advances to their ninth consecutive Sweet 16. They handled their opponent George Washington with relative ease and this is our second game in Greensboro Duke is in the Atlanta bracket Watson and Wingate have the last 15 Tennessee points Watson in fact has nine of Tennessee's 11 points this half and I think it's very important for Tennessee that Watson get involved offensively very quiet in the first half, only had two points, and with Lofton scoring well, he had 11 in the first half. Watson can really help him if he gets going. Great pass 
side. It came from Bradshaw. It was directed at Watson. And a Wichita State foul. It goes inside on the Shockers. And they put it on Bradley, who has assessed his first for Wichita State. And Bradshaw just does so many really good things out on the basketball court, scrapping for loose balls, making those good passes. That was a good cut by Watson, but almost an impossible pass to make, and Bradshaw executed it perfectly. Well, here's C.J. Watson at the free throw line. We told you he's a senior from Las Vegas, and he was the two-time Nevada High School Player of the Year. And the reason, one of the biggest reasons why he chose Tennessee is he has relatives in the Nashville area, in the state of Tennessee, close to Knoxville. He thought, why not go there? That's why he is a volunteer and a very important part of this year's team. Tennessee has made a couple of runs here at Wichita State. They've got seven steals in the game, and so now the Shockers need to respond as they did in the first half to Tennessee run. Oh, and Mark wasn't expecting that pass, and that had some serious gas on it from J.P. Kuznar. Well, Martin wasn't expecting it, Kevin, but when you're standing down underneath the basket, you better be ready to receive the ball <laughs> because if you're open, you're going to get it. Nice job by Bradley to find him, but as you said, Martin wasn't looking for the pass. Martin was so important in Wichita State's win on Thursday. He's got four points this afternoon. He had 10 in that first matchup with Seton Hall. Tennessee looks a little bit more comfortable in the half-court offense here in the second half. Bradshaw lost it. Just lost it himself. I don't even think it was poked away by Wilson. Here comes Karen Bradley. He played in that final 14 Marquette a couple years ago with Dwayne Wade. Martin inside to Wilson and a foul on Tennessee. Look to be on C.J. Watson. He got in foul trouble on Thursday. Picks up his second foul here in the second half. Now, Wilson goes out of the game. He's got 12 points, and he's had a solid afternoon. But Paul Miller has not really been able to get involved. Tennessee has defended him very well. He only has five points. And he averages 13. Nice outside shot. That is O'Geary's first three-point basket of the game, only his second three-point attempt. Tennessee up to that point had been almost perfect defending O'Geary. He's got five, and Wichita State is knocked in. Six of ten above the arc as Bradshaw tries to pile drive his way inside with the foul. Martin was defending and picks up his first. We talked earlier about that Miller-Wingate matchup on the inside, and Miller only one for six shooting. Wingate has done a nice job defensively. Bradshaw to a senior who just checked in. Nice inbound pass. Uh, assume though when he checks in things happen for Tennessee he brings tons of energy and good defense Mark great pass to Miller who is whacked on the way by Watson and Watson has picked up his second foul in a row and his third for the game let's see if Bruce Pearl is going to let him sit we talked about breaking the press to score this is a nice job only two guys for Tennessee back a nice pass Watson does a good job getting back and pressuring that play. Now Miller is going to have to make two free throws. Wichita State grabbed their 25th win of the season on Thursday, and the wins the most for Wichita State since the 82-83 season. Watson is out as we predicted, and coming in is Jordan Howell. Watson had 11 points this half, so they really miss an offensive sledgehammer. He just has the ability to get the ball into the lane in the half-court offense. Now, Jordan Howell came in, did a nice job in the Winthrop game. Smith got a screen from Bradshaw. That opens up that three-point hit. That's exactly what we're talking about with Bradshaw. Just does the things the team needs. Breyer back in the game, a three-on-two, takes it himself and floats for two, and Wichita State by two with 13 and a half to play in the second half. Thus far, anytime Tennessee's made a run, Wichita State has had an answer. That was very nice play in transition. Wingate picked up by Miller. Martin is on Bradshaw. Doubled by Miller. <laughs> Thus, that leaves Asunu free and two right in front again. Yeah, but how did Bradshaw find him? Did a great job getting in between the double team. Knocked away, deflected by Bradshaw. Ends up with Miller getting a pass from Martin, and that's another Tennessee foul. As Tennessee is really hot, 
Bradshaw, one of the reasons why the volunteers for Bruce Pearl have hit seven of their last nine shots from the field. Well, they're getting great looks at the basket. Bradshaw just went right in between Martin and Miller. And remember, Bradshaw, as Bruce Pearl keeps reminding us, is basically playing with one hand. That right wrist is really sore. He's going to have to have surgery on it after the season. He has a tough time gripping the basketball, but he's got to be one tough customer. Tennessee this season finished the regular year number 18 in the AP poll, and they had drifted as high as number eight. It was the first time that they had been ranked since the 2000-2001 season. But as high as number eight, dropping down to 18. Wichita State had been ranked as high as 28th, which isn't really a ranking, but they got some votes in the top 30. Now with Major Wingate going out of the game and Tennessee playing a smaller lineup, Mark Turgeon gets Paul Miller out of the game. A little bit better matchup. Kyle Wilson against Andre Patterson on the inside. Lofton and Bradshaw. Patterson, Howell, and Asunu. Very small lineup. Lofton a three. Lofton has been shooting like crazy from outside. He's Their fan base to repeat last year's performance. And they were at Joey Tucker told us yesterday they were, their fans wanted an elite eight. <laughs> I mean, all right, that's, that was great last year, Sweet 16, so they certainly have, they've got made. He puts it at three at the other end. That's his third of the game, Kevin. And the seventh for the Shockers. Patterson across the lane, guarded by Wilson. Lofton. Oh, nice fake by Bradshaw. He found the open room and slithers down for two. When they're playing off Bradshaw, they're not worried about his shooting from out there. There's a foul. I think that's on Lofton. But boy, if you're going to play off of him, he starts driving to the bench. Then you got to get in front of the man. We're exchanging threes, a combined 13 three-point hits. And then Bradshaw at the other end, finding to the hard way. Down. They were simply in transition. I mean, one of the better teams that didn't get into the NCAA tournament was South. And so a lot of depth and talent in the young SEC. Michael Bindal taking it to the right and he gets fouled. Barry picks up the foul. In, in many respects, uh, players leaving too soon and getting the wrong information from the wrong people had a lot to do with why the SEC was in such transition. It was a very young league. When you think about Olu Famotini of Arkansas, Randolph Morris has spent half the season out because somewhere someone thought he could actually think about the possibility of leaving. Uh, they got him back, obviously, at midseason when the NCAA changed an initial ruling. The Gators will advance and will await the winner of the Georgetown Ohio State game. For Mike Jaminski and Stephen Bardo, Tim Brando, so long. Let's take you to Brett Gumbel in New York. Tim Brando, thanks very much. The Florida Gators qualify for their first Sweet 16 since the year 2000. They are very impressive as they knock off Wisconsin-Milwaukee by a score of 82-60. Let's show you how they did it. Set. This is... This is uh, Wichita State and Tennessee in a close contest. It's been close throughout. P.J. Kuznard starts it off for the Shockers, nailing the three-pointer, and then Kyle Wilson dishes inside to Ryan Martin for the layup. This one's been back and forth all the way through. Major Wingate again, an impressive performance so far for Tennessee. And then Kuznard once again knocks down a three. That put Wichita State up by six. C.J. Watson and... And having a nice game for Tennessee. Most of his damage from three-point range. He's got 14 points on the day. A back-and-forth game, evenly matched, high score. Seth, I'm glad you knew where we were going. This is a, <laughs> such an evenly matched game right now, as you said. There hasn't been much to choose from between these two. Both teams have really shot the ball well in the second half. Three-point shooting from both teams. This one's going to stay tight, I think. It's going to be a matter of who can make the most big plays down the stretch. All right, they're coming out of a timeout now in Greensboro, North Carolina, Wichita State and Tennessee. They're tied at 50 just. For three 
three-point percentage. Both teams are using that this afternoon. We are deadlocked at 50 with just under 12 minutes to play in regulation. And both teams really shooting the ball well in the second half after four shooting performances in the first half. Wichita State six of seven in the second half. Tennessee 10 of 13. Tennessee shot 28% in the first 20 minutes of this game. So you're right. A big improvement. Martin did a good job catching the ball. That's a heck of a catch on the inside and a very easy shot once he caught the ball. Wichita State continues to get great position on the inside. C.J. Watson is still on the bench with the foul trouble for Tennessee. Thus, Howell is in with Bradshaw and Lofton. Wingate is on the bench as well, the big center for the Volunteers. We've got Andre Patterson in there, and Asumi, five for the Volunteers. Lofton around Wilson. Shot clock at eight. Andre Patterson, the transfer from UCLA. Three to shoot. Well, they tied it up. Goes back to the shot base. That was excellent defense by Wichita State. Tennessee, a lot of times in their half-court offense, what they like to do is penetrate into lane and then pitch it back out for a three. And that time, Wichita State did not allow Tennessee to get penetration into the lane. And when Patterson finally did get close to the basket, they were able to tip it away and finally block the shot. For Tennessee, Juwan Smith has come back in. Asunu is back on the bench. Here's Kuznard to Martin. That has been a nice thing. And they're finding Martin inside with regularity in the second half. Now, Martin, a little bit bigger, a little bit quicker than Dane Bradshaw. And he's taken advantage of what has become a bit of a mismatch. And Bruce Pearl with a timeout to talk about it. Interior defense has been a problem for the Tennessee Volunteers this season. And the Shockers cashing in right there. In orange, the fighting Illini of Illinois out of the Big Ten and the University of Washington in their purple colors from the Pac-10. No score, just a few seconds into the game. Into the backcourt to D. Brown. Both teams starting the game out in man-to-man -man for Washington. Bobby Jones, perhaps their best defender, long and athletic, guarding D. Brown. Wide open outside is Augustine, who can shoot that three-pointer. There come the Huskies. Beckman and Brockman, two freshmen in the starting five for Washington. Both made all Pac-10 freshman team. Brandon Roy, the All-America, hits his first attempt. Every time down, Washington wants the ball in the hands of Brandon Roy, arguably the most complete player in college basketball, being guarded by Brian Randall, one of the best defenders in college basketball. Here's Jones, the top defender for Washington on D. Brown. Inside it goes to Augustine, can't hit the bank, rebound through it, trickles off, and Dentman clears. Washington will not be able to allow second shots to Illinois. They were fortunate not to get scored upon there. Roy inside, look at the body control. Brandon Roy, the first four points of the game. Brandon Roy has an unusual feel for the game. He's not only very skilled, he's very smart as well. And he is going to be a handful for Randall to keep up with. Dean Brown fires a three. It's off the mark. Tipped out by Augustine. Out of bounds to Washington. This game brought to you in HDTV by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television and mobile media. Well, with that high definition, you are getting a very clear look at one of the best players in college basketball. I think top five in Brandon Roy. There's not a thing on the basketball court he cannot do. Leads his team in scoring over 20 a game. Leads them in assists. Voted the back 10 player of the year, and Jensen's pass goes out of bounds. Here's a quick look at the starting lineups for this game. Jensen, Brockman, Jones, Dentman, and Roy for Washington. Pruitt. Randall, Augustine, McBride, and Brown. Augustine and Brown, the two seniors with 114 wins in their four-year career at Illinois. That's an all-time Illini record and only one shy of the Big Ten mark. Both these teams very similar in makeup, with the exception of Illinois being a little bit bigger inside and stronger inside. Washington a bit younger with Brockman and Dentman, freshman in the starting lineup. Down under 10 on the shot clock as Brown makes his drive. It's short. Illinois kept it alive. That's the second time they have not been able to get the follow shot. Dentman a little change of pace in with the big guys and draws the foul. Trevor 
And uh, there he is, Bruce Weber, 49 years of age in his third year. It's true to his uh, talent on the bench. His uh, Illini team trying to make it to the Sweet 16s. You look at Lorenzo Romar, the Washington head man. If uh, Illinois gets to the Sweet 16 with a victory today, it'll be the only team of two, Duke being the other in the last three years, to get to the 16s. And the Illinois program the last six years, no team has won more games in the country than Duke. That Duke the, being the other with the Illini second. Edmund. You know this young man Justin Detman just made those two free throws has got to be very excited playing against the University of Illinois growing up in Carbondale Illinois where he went to school with Bruce Weber's kids he's Weber has known him since fifth grade and deep in the corner is Rich McBride to hit the three after the Illini had started 0 for 6 from the floor. Jamal Williams first attempt won't go down and a whistle underneath. No foul. It's out of bounds to Washington. Here comes Ryan Appleby the best outside shooter for the Huskies. He replaces Denton. A transfer from Florida. Really a good shooter with deep deep range. Speaking of Florida congratulations to the Gators and the Blue Devils the first two teams into the Sweet 16. Victories earlier today. Augustine with that long arm in the face to Williams. And the long rebound right back to Augustine. Williams always looking for that offense. And this is where Washington has to be careful in transition. This Illinois team deadly in transition. McBride, a clear path to the goal. As Washington scores the first six and Illinois the next five. I think that's a shot Dick, that McBride would have taken from the corner earlier this year. Now more of a driver and much more of a versatile player. He's really come along. Brockman misses his first attempt. Long pass to Augustine. That's what the Illini will do. He runs the floor so well. James Augustine at his height and gets the lead from Brown. Can't hit but is fouled by Appleby. McBride all five Illinois points. Seconds left on the shot clock. You don't see Bradshaw make very many mistakes. Nice tip away by Watson. And Kuznard, I think, for a moment thought that it would be an over and back, and he just steps right into Bradshaw's path. Draws the foul, It'll be a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Bradshaw picks up his second personal foul. Kuznard nails the first free throw. He was a defensive specialist in the Missouri Valley Conference this past season. But he's the leader in assists for Wichita State. Amazing. An interesting combination. Offensive rebounds, and he leads the team in assists. Basically from a wing position. This game has contained eight ties and six lead changes. Tennessee has led by one twice. Jawan Smith back in for Tennessee. Well, with Smith, Watson, and Lofton in the game at the same time, it really puts the pressure on the perimeter defense from Wichita State. Shot clock at six. Lofton double teamed, and Wingate cleans it up and fouled inside. And right now, he is the big thing that Wichita State cannot figure out. Well, Wichita State has to jump out. Miller has to jump out and help against the three-point shooters, and nobody's left for Wingate. That's the kind of pressure that those three-point shooters put on a defense. You've got to jump out and help on the screen. Wingate does a great job going to the basket. Bruce Pearl's wife, Kim, watching him. And she, so she has a hard time not only watching the game, but especially free throws. It's just something that she just can't, uh, can't keep her eye on. It makes her too nervous. Wait, how many times do you see that? Just a failure to block out on a free throw gives the opposition another opportunity. Tennessee is a team that can make you pay for it. It's a very interesting lineup in the game for Tennessee. Uh -oh. Watson is down. Shot clock at six. Lofton for the tie. Oh, hey. 
Are you kidding me? He shot that from that ribbon out on the court. And now the pressure defense builds as the momentum continues for the Volunteers. Kieran Bradley is in with the ball. Tennessee is at 18 second chance points. They've got 15 offensive rebounds. They have used those things in three-point shooting to come back and tie at 58. There is a three, which is missed by O'Geary, and now a chance to take a lead with Jawan Smith leading the way. Right here with the three-point lead by Tennessee. Look right there. Those are the feet of the defender. Lofton is so far behind the three-point line. He's right on that ribbon out there. You can barely see him through the backboard. And then we said Smith, also an excellent three-point shooter with Watson Smith and Lofton in the game at the same time. An awful lot of firepower for Tennessee. And there's the turnover. There's the pressure. Bruce Pearl's Tennessee Volunteers have nailed eight threes. They've come back from six down to take their biggest lead this afternoon. And Brandon Roy pulls down the rebound. Brown is rushing his shots, not squaring his body. That's why he's having trouble scoring. Jensen misses again from outside. Illinois number four in the nation in scoring offense. Illinois number nine in scoring defense. We'll see who prevails today and uh, hitting the deck again is Roy and grabbing the back of his head as he took a pretty good bounce. Williams going after the ball. You credit the hustle but he saved it right underneath Illinois basket and Brian Randall the versatile sophomore the lefty able to convert that and Brandon Roy the second time he goes down and it looked like he hit Marcus Arnold's knee with the back of his head. And a foul was called on the play, Jay Billis. Uh, James Augustine picking up his first. Brandon Roy might need a helmet in this game as hard as he's been hitting the deck. Justin Dempin has returned for Washington. He sets up Williams. Oh. Washington shooting from outside. They're not only not hitting, but they're not close. That's going to be a travel. Warren Carter who came off the bench and delivered 12 points. His first opportunity travels. Illinois really looking to push the ball up the floor. Not a great decision by D. Brown. Usually passing ahead the right thing, but you don't want to pass it to a big guy where he's got to put it on the floor on the dead run. Huskies have missed their last six attempts. Jensen hits the three. And the game is tied at nine, and that ends that run of nine straight by Illinois. It was a quick shot, but in much better rhythm than the last few jump shots taken by Jamal Williams. Carter can't hit the short jumper, and here comes Dentman on the fly. The Huskies like to push the ball quickly up court. They're a high scoring machine. Williams can't hit. Look at the hands of Roy out of the pack that had the dribble for a while, and then the tie up. Time up. Timeout called by Arnold before the held ball was called. It's a 9 all score early here in San Diego. A 7 0 run by Tennessee. Shooting 68% in the second half, and Wingate dives inside the call for the trap. It's a very important time for Wichita State to respond. Tennessee has had a couple of mini runs, 6 0, 5 0, and Wichita State has been able to respond. This is a situation where Tennessee has really turned up the heat defensively. This not as it Bradley, Geary, Wilson, Miller, the Wichita State Five. Approaching seven to play in regulation. Bradley to Miller. Wingate defended. Keeps him outside, and that affected the shot. Look at Kusnard. Trying to vacuum it in and finally picked up by Jawan Smith of Tennessee with Watson and Bradshaw assume new in Wingate. Wingate not only has scored 13 points, but I think his defense against Miller has been nothing short of outstanding. Bradshaw lasers it inside for assume new. Miller got a hand on it. Smith with a three. Knocked away by Bradley out of bounds and off of Tennessee. 
They had some kind of game. Wichita State's biggest lead six. Tennessee's biggest lead is three. And the turnover is really a story of the game. Wichita State here in the second half has also turned the ball over. They get themselves in a tough spot. And we get a jump ball call, and that will turn it over to Tennessee. So there is another turnover. Wichita State really not doing a very good job here in the last few minutes, staying out of those trapping areas on the sideline. What a great job by Wingate, moving his feet. The little guard can't get around him. Bruce Pearl making it a triple team over there, although he tried to act like he wasn't. <laughs> Breyer comes in, Bradley checks out for Wichita State. I think Bruce Pearl was, he'd have gotten a foul called on him and he reached in. It was good discipline not to reach yeah. in. Watson playing with a bit of foul trouble. Wingate has made a difference since he's been in the contest. And a three man lost it. That's the 14th three point try he has attempted today. And Wilson trying to save it. Broken up on the play by a Zunu and a foul. Asunu. Asunu has been all over the place in this game. There he tries to get the rebound. Wilson saves it. Asunu going to get called for the foul because he not only throws the ball out of bounds, he throws O'Geary out of bounds with it. <laughs> and here is O'Geary at the free throw line. I mentioned this the other day. He set the single season Wichita State record for three pointers made. Boy, but he has been very, very quiet today. A critical miss in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Soon new into Bryant. Bradshaw fighting for it for Tennessee, but Miller gobbles it up. And the Shockers the other way. Kusnard with it. Boy, Wichita State desperate for a basket. And Miller trying to provide it. Rebound by Lofton. Wichita State, no field goals for the last five minutes. Miller with the rejection. I think he's going to be Slamming called for a foul. Floor. I think you're right. Watson was the one slammed to the floor. That's the way Tennessee wants to play. They get the ball out quickly. They run it down the court. And here's Watson going hard, hard to the goal. Tennessee, particularly the last couple of minutes, Kevin, has really been in a tremendous attack mode, both on offense and on defense. And Wichita State has not been able to respond. I mean, this is one of those teams, Tennessee, where their defense really does fuel their offense. They pressure like that. I'm sure that just gets things rolling. And when they get rolling, the only way you can stop the roll is to score on your end of the court. And Wichita State just hasn't been able to do that. O'Geary and Miller have basically been shut off by Tennessee today. And Tennessee's got their biggest lead. They're riding a 9 nothing run. Here comes Bradley back in the game, and over Watson tries to find two and does. Boy, that is a big, big shot, and now Wichita State has to dig in on the defensive end here. Tennessee has been doing a great job in the half court. These three guards in the lineup at the same time have really created some problems for Wichita State. Wingate set a nice screen, but Lofton couldn't capitalize on it. Here comes Breyer again. Well, Lofton, we're not sure about what his range is. He keeps moving <laughs> further and further up, but we are certain that he has no conscience. It is a sliding scale. You're right. Wilson with Wingate right there and deflected out of bounds by Watson. The shot clock at 19, the big clock at 5.05. You have those three guards, all of whom are extremely capable three-point shooters as you look at Lofton's numbers today. And Tennessee just put such pressure on Wichita State that Wingate has been able to have pretty free reign down on the inside, and he's taken advantage of it. Wichita State has not been to the Sweet 16 since 1981. Tennessee hasn't been there since 2000. They double-team Miller. Somehow holds on to the ball. Bradley in there fighting, and Jawan Smith grabs it for the Volunteers. That was a really, really tough shot by Miller. Well, Jawan Smith has eight rebounds for Tennessee. He has looked good. Miller double teamed that time, tries to get out of the double team, the fadeaway shot. Again, that is, that's a close look at the basket, but it's not a good look at the basket. He's heavily defended in there. Wichita State has 17 fouls, Tennessee has eight. First trip to the free throw line for Bradshaw. You saw Miller with nine points, Kevin, but he only has one field goal in the game. Seven of Miller's nine points coming from the free throw line. Bradshaw is from Memphis. Well, Wingate. Is on miss. Yeah, Wingate, Wingate tipped it back. He, he did. Lofton, good ball rotation to Watson. There's Smith who's got eight points and eight rebounds. That's a foul. Watson picked it up. And now Watson 
is assessed his fourth foul, and it comes with 4.31 to play. And that Watson's going to have to come out of the game, and Tennessee has gotten on such a good run with that three-guard lineup. Watson's ability to penetrate and create openings, plus his ability to supply defensive pressure has really helped Tennessee during this stretch. Jordan Howell will take the place of C.J. Watson. And now without Watson in the game, Tennessee backs off on the pressure. Gusnard. Oh, he didn't realize he had a lane to the basket. Oh, Geary for the tie. <laughs> Wichita State just pounded in their eighth three-point shot of the day, matching the eight of Tennessee. You gotta find Lofton in this situation if you're the Wichita State defense. And Wingate has a big advantage on, has at least a slight advantage on the inside against Wilson. Oh, my. With the three. That is the 25th three-point attempt by the Tennessee Volunteers today, the 16th by Lofton. He's at five. Tennessee with 15 offensive rebounds in this game. 17, excuse me. <laughs> they get more than I can count. Lofton lobbing it inside, Wingate. Well, what a great look by Lofton. Wingate's got 15 to match his 15 from Thursday. And that basket by Wingate ended a six consecutive field goal miss streak for the Volunteers. Hartness screen. Gusnard inside and for the tie. And another screen by Martin. Screen the defender away. Nice slashing move by Gusnard. Great play. We've had 11 times. Inside plays by Wingate. Smith with a nice reverse on the dribble and picks up the foul. And Brandon Roy will return for Washington. Lorenzo Romar didn't uh, rest him long. He's waiting at the scorer's table. Pruitt with the foul is first. Illinois has been very physical with Brandon Roy. You can expect that to continue. And Joel Smith, the lefty athlete, put the ball on the floor nicely and drew that blocking foul on Sean Pruitt. Smith, who uh, played little against Air Force, uh, has contributed three points off the bench, and that's eight straight as Jensen goes out to the Illinois line. That substitution made so that Randall can guard Brandon Roy. Randall, arguably the best defender in the Big Ten with his length and athleticism. And Bruce Weber wants him on Roy at every opportunity. A nine straight. For Washington to open a seven point advantage as we approach the midpoint of this first 20 minute period. The battle to go to Washington, D.C. in the final 16. Full court pressure by Washington. What a block and control. Roy comes up with it, hits to the other end. Appleby for three. Oh, my. What a run by the Huskies. They're really barking. 12 in a row. And what a play by Brandon Roy with the left hand dribble and the hesitation move going right around the quicker and faster D. Brown, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year last year. Appleby hitting a couple of trays to spark this incredible run by the Huskies. They don't do that to Illinois very often, 12 unanswered. Post between Augustine and Jones, and Jones wins the battle. And to give Bobby Jones a tremendous amount of credit, he started off the game guarding D. Brown. Now he is guarding James Augustine, and the block by Smith, and then the three off the great pass by Brandon Roy Appleby has been setting his feet on that side of the floor, knocking down his second tray of this first half. That was a big whistle. Augustine picks up his second foul and stays in the game with 9.20 left in the half. Roy, what a pass to Jones and the foul. James Augustine picking up that second foul, being guarded by Jones, holding him off with that left arm, just pushing a little bit. And there, that is a definitely an offensive foul. Jones so versatile and quick. At 6'6", with his long arms, able to battle to get around in front and just frustrating James Augustine. Jones shoots two. The foul was on Pruitt, his second. 
Jones uh, in his career at Washington over 1200 points number 20 all time in scoring to complement his terrific play on the defensive end averaging 10 and a half this year. Lorenzo Romar's first recruit at Washington and he has really developed his game. He's become a more competent shooter. He can put the ball on the floor and just magnificent defensively. A great team player. E. Brown with the ball. No points. No assists. No rebounds in the first 11 minutes of the game. McBride not there and what good minutes Joel Smith is giving Lorenzo Romar off the bench. He had the rebound. He's athletic and he's playing like an athlete. And right now Washington is just quicker to the ball. Brandon Roy with a dribble. Randall on him. There's Smith. And he's not close on that attempt. Brown, coast to coast. Won't go down, but it's saved by Augustine, and they crash into the Washington bench. Smith and Augustine both are okay. Project. How about the speed of D. Brown going north-south? He may not be as quick east-west, but north-south, he is really quick. And the push-off foul on Sean Pruitt to get position. Approaching two to play in regulation. That was our eighth lead change of the afternoon. Bradshaw for the lead. Missing that three. Wichita State's got it. An important defensive rebound. That's an area where Wichita State has had problems. Tennessee has 18 offensive rebounds, 19 second chance points, but now Wichita State chance to get it, make it a two possession game. Good pressure. Bradley, O'Geary for three. Offensive rebound by Martin, who has been indispensable in this first and second round. Absolutely. We just talked about Tennessee and their offensive rebounding. That's number nine for Wichita State. None bigger than that one by Martin. Want to play tough defense here without fouling. Clock running down. Bradley or Kuznard going to try to create. Now with the shot clock down to five. Kuznard for three. Oh! What a shot! My heavens! Wichita State is on a 12 to 2 run. And Smith was diving in the lane for Tennessee. It's a five point shocker lead. This is reminiscent of the basket at the end of the first half, but this one was further away. The defender, Dane Bradshaw, right there. Boy, Kuznard, only a 33% three point shooter on the year. He's now got 19 in the game. He has had a huge game. 19 is a game high. 17 by Lofton leads Tennessee. Smith at the line. And he is 2 of 2 this afternoon. Oh. But they do have Kavalaskis to come in and, and give him some help. It is a very intimidating front line for LS. For the Volunteers. Missing two right there and a rebound by Kyle Wilson. Lofton is on O'Geary and a foul on Lofton. Now the reason Martin went out of the game, Kevin, is Mark Turgeon took him out because Martin, as valuable as he has been, is only a 53% free throw shooter. So Mark Turgeon has his best free throw guys in the game. And O'Geary, we showed you before, 85% on the year. Although he missed his only attempt earlier, he's got two shots right now. Twenty-five years ago that Wichita State last went to the Sweet 16 and they are 50 seconds away from doing it under sixth year head coach Mark Turgeon. They've got their biggest lead. Up by seven. Here comes CJ Watson for the volunteers. 